Hello everybody. Welcome to KPIS Delhi's Care Initiative. Current Affairs through Reverse Engineering. These are the articles that we'll be seeing today. Adjudicating Authority under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002. The context of the article is that this Prevention of Money Laundering Act Adjudicating Authority has upheld the attachment of over Rs. 751 crore linked to Congress Associated Journal Limited and Young Indian. Okay, now what is important for prelims is this Prevention of Money Laundering Act of 2002. We have to see some basics about it, all right? Now, this Prevention of Money Laundering Act of 2002 was enacted by the NDA government. Okay, the year is already here. And the rules were notified and they came into effect from 2005, July 1st, 2005, all right? And the act and rules notified under under this act actually impose an obligation on banking companies financial institutions so banking companies financial institutions and intermediaries to verify identity of clients maintain records and furnish information and prescribe form to the financial intelligence unit in india okay now, what is an adjudicating authority? First of all, what is adjudication? Adjudication is to make a formal judgment on disputed matters. That is adjudication. And the authority doing so is called adjudicating authority. All right. And this adjudicating authority is appointed by the central government through notification to exercise jurisdiction, powers and authority conferred under this PMLA. Prevention of Money Laundering Act. Okay, now we'll come to some sections under PMLA. Section 5 of this Act provides the attachment of any property that is suspected to have been acquired with proceeds of crime in case of any offence that is listed in the schedule of the law. Okay, if there is any property, if, if some person is committing a crime, he is getting some money and he is buying some property. Okay, so under Section 5, this property can be attached okay so saying that this is brought or uh, this fellow bought this property by means of crime okay so what happens that is called initial attachment okay and within this initial attachment the adjudicating authority uh, who is appointed by the central government must actually Confirm this with proof. Okay. The provisional attachment, provisional attachment or this initial attachment is for 180 days. And this fellow, this is provisional attachment, right? So this fellow can enjoy his property for 180 days after attachment. Only when the adjudicating authority has confirmed that yes, crime was committed and he used this money to uh, actually buy this property then this fellow will stop enjoying has to stop enjoying this and automatically this will go into the this will go out of his hands okay and he it will go out of his hands to whom to ed what is ed enforcement directorate now we need to know some basics about ed enforcement directorate what is this enforcement directorate it is a domestic law enforcement agency and economic intelligence agency. Okay, so I mentioned right under Money Laundering Act, the financial information must be given to financial intelligence units. So this ED and this PMLA are interconnected. Okay, and what is the responsibility of ED? It is responsible for enforcing economic laws and fighting economic crimes in India. Okay, and it was established in the year 1956 when an enforcement unit was formed for handling exchange control laws. Okay, under Financial Exchange Regulation Act of 
1947 and it was renamed in 1957 as enforcement directorate before it was called as enforcement unit okay and what is the nodal ministry it is ministry of finance and what department department of revenue department of revenue okay what is the primary objective or what are the laws that ed looks into the primary objective of enforcement directorate is to enforce three key acts in india what are those one is fema what is fema foreign exchange management act of 1999 and as i already told this and this are interlinked second one is pmla okay and third is fugitive economic offenders act of 2018 Fugitive Economic Offenders Act of twenty eighteen. Okay, so these points you have to remember. See, Section nineteen of the PMLA Act empowers Enforcement Directorate to arrest persons based on material in possession. Okay, and they must give a reason in writing to the arrested person as to why they are arresting. Okay, if not. Uh, then and there, at least within twenty four hours, they must give the reasons in writing. Okay, so these are the basics. Consider the following statements concerning the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. It is an emergency era law enacted to prevent money laundering and to provide confiscation of property. What is emergency era law? It is not an emergency era law because it was enacted in two thousand two. That's what we saw in basics. And when was the emergency? It was from twenty fifth June. To twenty first, twenty fifth June of nineteen seventy five, nineteen seventy five to twenty first March of nineteen seventy seven. So this is emergency era, right? But this act was enacted in two thousand two, so definitely this is wrong. Now the Central Bureau of Investigation is the entity responsible for enforcing the provisions of the act. Just now we have seen that Enforcement Directorate is responsible for implementing provisions of three acts. What are those acts? Foreign Exchange Management Act of nineteen ninety nine. then pmla that is prevention of money laundering act of 2002 and fugitive economic offenders act okay when was the fugitive economic offenders act in place in 2018 okay so this is not central bureau of investigation now verification by adjudicating authority is mandatory to claim the possession of properties attached under the act this is yes that is the uh, thing which we discussed right adjudicating authority 180 days the provisional attachment during the provisional attachment yes that fellow whoever has committed the crime and has the property he can enjoy but once if within this 180 days the adjudicating authority says see we have a proof that you did so and so and yes this is uh, this money is earned through crime then obviously this Your property will go out of his hand. All right. Which of the following statement? These are correct. Third statement is right. With reference to India, consider the following pairs. Action, the act under which it is covered. Okay. Unauthorized swearing of uh, unauthorized wearing of police or military uniforms. The Official Secrets Act of nineteen twenty three. This is correct because uh, this act actually prohibits person from using or wearing. without lawful authority any naval military or air force or police or other official uniforms okay so that is this is correct knowingly misleading or otherwise interfering with a police officer or military officer when engaged in their duties see this also if you use common sense this is what this is also misleading if a person who is not a police is wearing that uniform and you know threatening other people it is misleading right and knowingly misleading or otherwise interfering with police officer or military officer when engaged in their duties this is also a case of misleading so both should be under one act right so it is also official secrets act so this is wrong celebrity gun fire which can endanger the personal safety of others the arms amendment act of 2019 this is correct because mm, it was amended in 2019 and it added new offenses such as forcefully taking a firearm from police or armed forces and using firearms in a celebrity gunfire which endangers human life or personal safety of others all right so this is right 
how many pairs are correctly matched one and three so only two pairs are correctly matched adb raises india's gdp growth forecast in 2024-25 at seven percent okay so what is important for prelims is some basic part about adb and what did adb say it said growth forecast of india's gdp is seven percent and it also said that changes in usa like the federal rate federal bank whatever it's doing it is a it will affect india because we are connected right okay now some basics about adb adb stands for asian development bank and it was in place in the year 1966 in which year 1966 which place manila philippines okay and uh, asian development bank has 49 members from asia and pacific and 19 members outside asia from outside asia okay so you should not confuse going by the name you will think only asian members will be there but no all right so uh, coming to voting powers japan and usa japan and usa has the highest voting and india is the fourth largest one okay then who is the third fellow it's china okay now um you should understand from this at least that countries other than asian countries are also part of this adb because usa is not a asian country no okay and it has observer status you it is uno observer and um, it is in line with world bank and it admits members from un escap and also non regional developed countries okay and uh, it also helped to build a global skills park in bhopal and it see this voting power is actually based on capital subscription all right so these are some basics yeah what is this un escap it is united nations economic and social council not council commission commission for asia and pacific okay so it is united nations economic and social commission for asia and pacific and it is one of the five regional commissions under the jur- jurisdiction of un ecosoc what is this un ecosoc united nations economic and social council okay consider the following statements only countries belonging to asia pacific region are part of asian development bank no this is wrong that's what we have seen in the basics part right only 49 countries are from asia pacific region 19 are from um other than asian countries okay 19 are other than asian countries okay and uh, if you do not remember this at least remember that the highest voting power is Japan uh, is shared by Japan and USA, okay. And th- they are in the first position. Say so, um, then third position is China. Fourth position is India. All right. So this you have to remember, because here USA is there and it is not a Asian country, which means this ADB has members from other continents also. Now it is it, the organization is headquartered in Philippines. Yes, Manila, Philippines, and it was established in nineteen sixty-six. So this is right. As per ADB report, the U.S. federal policy stance will have a more pronounced and persistent impact on India due to higher sensitivity of its inflation pace to exchange rate fluctuations, fluctuations, and reliance on imported goods. This is true. We have just seen. No, uh, according to the report, it has projected India's GDP growth. Uh, India's GDP. growth forecast in 2024-25 um it is 7% that's what it said and it also said that whatever federal rates are there in usa whatever the fluctuations are happening it will affect india it is affecting india because they are all interconnected with in terms of exports and imports all right 2 and 3 year right which of the which among the following above statements these are correct 2 and 3 with reference to asian infrastructure investment bank consider the following statement see this 
AIIB is considered to be the rival of World Bank, okay, and it is headquartered in Beijing, China. It was formed in 2016, and yes, India is a founding member. You should remember that Japan and USA, which share the highest voting power in ADB, are not part of this AIIB. Okay, uh, now here also AIIB, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. You should not assume that only Asian countries will be present. Non-Asian countries like Fiji and New Zealand are also there in AIIB. It is open to mem. In fact, it is open to members of IBRD and I ADB. Now, what is IBRD? Yesterday we have seen now International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. And how many members are there in AIB? Now it is one not nine. Regional members are forty seven. Non regional members are forty eight. See, regional members are only forty seven, and one more than this are non regional members. That is not from Asia. And uh, prospective members are fourteen. All right, totally one not nine. Now we'll come back to these are some basics about AIB. We'll come back to MCQ. AIB has more than eighty member nations. Yes. India is the largest shareholder in AIB. No, it is not India. It is China. Okay, second is India. All right. This is wrong. AIB does not have any members from outside Asia. We've just seen that more than Asian countries, non-Asian countries are there. So this is wrong. A is the answer because they're asking the correct statement. India Mauritius revive tax treaty aimed to plug evasion in the entire article. Things which are important for prelims and some basics about this double taxation avoidance agreement we will discuss here. All right. When did India and Mauritius actually sign the double taxation avoidance agreement in first place? It was in the year 1982. Now, what is this double taxation avoidance agreement? See, this is a tax treaty. This is a tax treaty signed between two or more countries. And what is the objective? It is. It has the objective that taxpayers in these countries can avoid being taxed two times or twice for the same income. Okay, so a double taxation avoidance agreement applies in cases where a taxpayer resides in one country and he earns the income in the other. Clear? Okay, so that's why double taxation avoidance agreement. That means he has to pay tax once for. That income, not twice. So to avoid double taxation, this DTA is in place. Okay. Now India has DTAs with many countries. To name a few, Australia, Canada, Germany, Mauritius, Singapore, UAE, UK, and USA. Okay. Now in this DTA, recently it was amended, and Article Two Seven Twenty Seven B was introduced. Okay. Before this one, the treaty was amended in the year twenty sixteen. All right, and through this amendment, this principal purpose test clause was included. Now, this term is important. What is this principal purpose test clause? See, as per this clause, tax benefits under the treaty will not be applicable if it is established that obtaining that duty benefit was the principal purpose of any transaction or agreement. Okay, so the intention here matters. Okay, so this principal purpose test will deny treaty benefits such as reduction in withholding, um, reduction of withholding of tax. On interest, royalties, and dividends, where it is established that obtaining that treaty benefit is one of the principal purposes for the party engaged in the transaction. Okay, so principal purpose test, where the intentions matter. All right, some tidbits. Recently, uh, Sri Lanka and India's DTAA was also amended. All right, now. Principal purpose test, which was recently seen in news, is associated with which of the following? Israel Hamas conflict? No. Principal purpose test is related to India Mauritius trade agreement. In fact, DTA is okay. So, not just this agreement. This principal purpose test is associated with what DTA is. What are DTA is? 
double taxation avoidance agreements all right so this principal purpose test actually focuses on the intention all right as we have discussed earlier so b is the answer with reference to indian ocean rim association for regional cooperation consider the following statement some basics about indian ocean rim association it was established in the year 1977 mauritius mauri in mauritius and it has um, 21 member states maldives joined in 2018 all right and you should remember that india is part of this indian ocean rim association but it is not part of indian ocean commission all right in 2018 they adopted delhi declaration what is delhi declaration of iora iora means indian ocean rim association um delhi declaration of the indian ocean rim association was uh, with respect to renewable energy okay so indian ocean dialogue is also organized by this grouping now it was established very recently in response to incidents of piracy and accidents of oil spills no not very recently 1977 is the year it was asked in 2015 so not very recently this is wrong it is an alliance meant for maritime security only no you are narrowing down the purpose right now we have already seen that there was a delhi declaration which was referring to renewable energy now maritime security only this is wrong so which of the statements given above is are correct neither one nor two d is the answer seventh round of trade negotiations between india and peru now for prelims you have to understand some basics about peru for example its geographical location peru is surrounded by which countries yeah it is ecuador here you will have ecuador then you will have colombia then comes brazil then it is bolivia and then it is chile okay here it is pacific ocean all right so these are the countries that surround peru ecuador colombia brazil bolivia and chile this is one basic point second one is that india and peru established diplomatic relations way back in 1963 and peru is also when we are talking about ties you can also mention that peru is a member of international solar alliance and peru is one of the few countries which is also supporting india for its candidature for unsc permanent member seat all right and also it is supporting us with respect to kashmir issue these are the basics now consider the following statements with regards to india peru relations india and peru established diplomatic relations after independent in indian independence yes because it's in 1963 right so the, it is after independence peru is a member of international solar alliance which was started by india yes we have just seen right it is a member of isa okay now isa aims to mobilize more than us dollar 1 trillion by 2030 to promote solar and power globally next peru does not support any candidature for permanent seat in unsc as it itself is a contender for the same this is wrong because peru is one of the few countries which is supporting india for india's candidature as a permanent men- member in unsc and it is also supporting our india side on the kashmir issue all right so this is wrong which of the above statements is are correct one and two are correct a is the answer now with reference to a grouping of countries known as brics consider the following statements brics is an important theme this year because of the new additions to brics grouping all right so b r i c s stands for brazil russia india china and south africa while countries these countries were there from the inception south africa joined in 2010 okay and all these five countries are part of g20 also and the first summit that happened was in russia in the year 2009 all right the 13th summit uh, happened in india and during the 15th summit during the 15th summit in johannesburg 15th summit in johannesburg the new countries were added what are the new countries egypt ethiopia iran saudi arabia and uae 
okay uh, it was at johannesburg and it was in the month of august in 2023 okay and uh, pm of india suggested a space exploration consortium in the summit so this year because of the new additions this is important and you should also understand that there is a new development bank or also known as the brics bank okay it was from the year 2014 that it it's working and it is headquartered in shanghai china all right and it is equally owned by the brics nations as of now and the first regional office is in johannesburg ndb while this is equally owned by all members there is something called brics contingent reserve arrangement and uh, that is um, not uniform okay the contributions are not uniform and the voting rights are not uniform and it is a rival of imf okay so you should remember ndb and brics contingent reserve arrangement all right now come to the question the first summit of brics was held in rio de janeiro in 2009 no it the year is correct but it was in russia all right and 15th summit was held in johannesburg that is in 2023 all right and uh, 13th summit was held in india new delhi now south africa was the last to join brics grouping when it was in 2014 the statement is right but okay so according to 2014 question the statement is right and b is the answer but now if the question is asked then this is wrong because other countries are also added no invasive chital threaten natural ecosystems in andaman now you should understand that ye invasive species hote kya hai what are these invasive species invasive species are uh, those whose introduction or spread outside their natural past or present distribution threatens the biological diversity okay and where do we find this definition it is in the convention of biological diversity so these include animals plants fungi and even microorganisms this is one definition and wildlife protection act it is of 1972 was amended in the year 2022 and the definition of this was narrowed down why because it defined after the amendment invasive species were defined as species of animal or plant which is not native to india okay india and whose introduction or spread may threaten or adversely impact wildlife or its habitat okay what does this mean you might think these both are same ye to to theek hi lag raha hai matlab what is the issue the issue is that this definition leaves out species within india which might be invasive to a particular region like the chital in andamans na no? so these are excluded uh, from the definition of now uh, this invasive species after the amendment of wildlife protection act according to this act but according to cbd they are still invasive okay so in a bit to manage the population of chital chital is nothing but the spotted deer spotted deer in ross island officially it is known as the netaji subhash chandra bose island the andaman and nicobar islands administration recently sought help from the wildlife institute of india and where did they come from this chital chital uh, were actually native to mainland india but were introduced to this island by the british in the early 20th century so having no natural predators or competitors and being good swimmers chitals were swiftly spread across andamans okay and uh, they deteriorated the native flora and fauna on the islands okay so that's why they are brought into news that is the context and this is about the definition part what are the other species that are invasive in the indian context certain species of fish such as african catfish tilapia nile tilapia red bellied piranha and alligator gar okay these are uh, invasive species 
which of the following statements with regards to invasive species is not correct okay invasive species act as disruptors in food chain and disturb the balance of the ecosystem yes this, this is correct because yeah, we have seen now this chital in the context of the article is actually the description of the statement okay chital are actually growing rampantly and they are disturbing the na native species there now in india the legal definition of invasive species under the wildlife protection act 1972 amended in 2022 is narrower yes it actually says that uh, species invasive species are those animals or plant species which is not native to india and whose introduction or spread may threaten or adversely impact the wildlife so it it leaves out species within india which might be invasive to a particular region so that's why it is narrower when compared to the cbd definition of in uh, invasive alien species now as per the convention on biological diversity invasive alien species include animals plants fungi and even microorganisms yes it is a broader definition right we have just seen in the explanation part now chital are invasive to andaman as well as mainland india not to mainland india mainland india they are native to mainland india they are only invasive to andaman so this is wrong d is the answer because they are asking not correct now invasive species specialist group that develops global invasive species database belongs to which one of the following organization so this is actually managed by the invasive species specialist group of species survival commission of the iucn okay some basics about this one it was actually developed as a part of the global initiative on invasive species led by the earth file global invasive species program in 2000 okay and this group was established in the year 1994 as a specialist group within the species survival commission of the iucn species survival commission there is iucn there is special Sur survival commission and then this invasive species specialist group all right so it is the international union for conservation of nature that is iucn this is the answer all right this is it for today all the best